This video is going to cover renewable energy, which majors to pick if you want to go into this field, and a little bit of the research that's being done so you know what's going on. Renewable energy is defined as energy from a source that is not depleted when used, such as wind or solar power. But first, let's just talk about energy sources for those who don't know the main types. We use various energy sources to generate electricity, heat, fuel our cars, and more. Now the main types are fossil fuels, nuclear power, and renewable energy. But there are three types of fossil fuels which are coal, natural gas, and oil or petroleum. And then renewable energy includes solar, wind, hydroelectric, and more, which I'm just about to get into. But these are all very different, so don't think of it as just one field. First, fossil fuels are found in the earth and formed over millions of years, hence the fossil in fossil fuels. Coal is burned, which releases heat, which is then used to generate electricity to power our homes and buildings, among other types of applications. Natural gas is used mainly for heating, cooking, and electricity. Then oil or petroleum is used typically for transportation like in cars and aircrafts. Fossil fuels are also the majority of energy used at the moment, and I'll get into those statistics soon as well. There are more applications, but these are the main ones. Nuclear power is also used to generate electricity to power our homes and buildings, just like coal does. But the good thing about nuclear power is that it is actually environmentally friendly because it doesn't burn fuel. Although there are cons to this, one being radioactivity is dangerous in the event of an accident at the plant. Now on to renewable energy. The main renewable energy resources include solar, wind, geothermal, hydroelectric, biomass, and ocean energy. And all of these are things you could work on in your career. Now solar power is of course getting energy from the sun's rays, like with the use of solar panels. Then wind energy is generated from the wind through the use of a turbine that is turned to generate electricity. Geothermal is one people may not know, which is about extracting heat from the earth. Geothermal wells are drilled into the ground and a pump would transfer hot steam or water from the earth up through the pipes, which is then used to generate electricity. You can see a simplified version here and how heat is extracted through pipes from within the earth, then that's turned into electricity and is deposited back to the earth. There are many methods, but this is the idea and designing and maintaining these plants, or even ones that exist under our homes, need engineers. Hydroelectric is about using flowing water to generate electricity. A dam is built to stop the flow of water. Then a gate can be opened which will allow the water to flow downhill. This flow of water then creates kinetic energy in a turbine which is used to generate electricity. One example of this is at Niagara Falls there's actually a hydroelectric plant. The plant diverts water that would go over the falls and channels it through a turbine to produce electricity, then it regroups back at the bottom of the falls. Ocean energy is of course about gaining energy from the ocean, which can be broken up into things like tidal energy, wave energy, and more. One example of this is a turbine that's just underwater, which uses the energy of tidal currents to turn a turbine, very similar to how wind energy works. But this is just one way to do it and there are many others but movement from the ocean water is free, so using that can help us generate electricity. Lockheed Martin, although known as a defense company, actually works on tidal projects and underwater turbines for power generation. And last is biomass, which is organic matter, like plants, that's used as fuel. Plants contain energy from the sun due to photosynthesis, and then when burned, this is released as heat. But there are other types of biomass out there, such as wood and crops. Now we also burn coal to create heat and energy, but coal is not renewable because it took millions of years to form. Once we burn it, we can't just get more even in one lifetime. But crops and other biomass can be grown quickly and again used for energy. But if we look at the most used renewable energy resources in the United States, biomass actually comes in first, accounting for 46%. The next highest is hydroelectric at 24%, then wind at 21%, solar at 6% and geothermal at 2%. Which is surprising because we hear of solar being talked about in the news more often than anything else, but it's still a very small percentage of the overall energy being used. Now if we include all energy sources, including petroleum, natural gas, coal, nuclear power, and all these renewable energy resources combined, guess how much this renewable energy accounts for? Well, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, in 2016, renewable energy only accounted for 10% of all energy used. And you can see the breakdown here. So notice how renewable energy accounts for only 10% of all energy used. And all those sources I listed are just a small percentage of that. So even though we are hearing more and more about renewable energy and it is growing, it's not even close to the majority. 
As you can see, fossil fuels make up the majority of energy used, and nuclear electric power just about ties all the renewable energy sources combined. So now that we've got the basics, what are the best majors to get into if you want to dive into this field? Now this is one of those answers where it really depends on what you want to do. Some of the most common engineering majors include mechanical, electrical, civil, chemical, materials, and even aerospace or industrial engineering, although those last two aren't quite as common. Then chemistry and physics are two of the most popular sciences to go into. But what could you do with each of these? Well, if you want to build the dam that is used in the production of hydroelectric power, like I showed earlier, then civil engineering might be good for you. Or civil engineers could deal with earthquakes for geothermal plants and make sure the structure of everything can withstand the vibrations that occur in the event of an earthquake. Mechanical engineering would be an option for those wanting to work on solar panels. I said in another video that for a senior project, some mechanical engineers tested the differences between stationary solar panels and ones that track sunlight to see the improved efficiency. And they had designed all the mechanical aspects of the system. Mechanical engineers could also work on wind turbines, like determining the aerodynamics and how to optimize the shape of the turbine so it generates maximum energy from the wind. Even aerospace engineers could work on this because it involves aerodynamics, which is why I listed it as a possible major. Mechanical engineers could design the piping for geothermal applications, or the turbine that the steam turns to generate electricity. They could help with the manufacturing, they could also help with the structure of a dam for hydroelectric, and honestly so much more. This is probably one of the most flexible majors you can get into. The materials engineers could help with optimizing the efficiency of solar panels. Materials engineers are trying to make photovoltaic cells, which convert light into electric current, much more efficient and cheaper to fabricate by analyzing various materials that are favorable. Or in the field of nanotechnology, materials engineers are working on energy storage to improve performance in batteries, like maybe better batteries for electric vehicles. Chemical engineers can be in charge of the process that makes solar panels, and also try to reduce their cost of manufacturing by investigating things like organic and carbon solar cells. You could also go into biofuel research as a chemical engineer, which can be used to power vehicles instead of diesel. Electrical engineers would deal with the electric power generation and distributing the large amount of electric power, because whether it's hydroelectric, solar, wind, or ocean, these all generate electricity. And any electrical components in these systems would be worked on by electrical engineers. Industrial engineers could even oversee the entire process and ensure that the energy capabilities meet the needs of the clients. They wouldn't actually be designing the system, but they would focus more on the larger scale and the business side of things. Physics majors could work on modeling fluid flow on the computer for capturing ocean energy and designing those systems, or they could work in developing superconducting material that would improve the transmission systems with regards to renewable energy. And I could keep going. This isn't just one field because there are so many energy sources out there and they all require multiple disciplines. And I just listed a few things you could get into with these various majors, but I didn't remotely cover everything you could encounter. And now I'm just going to go into some research and projects that are going on in alternative energy. One includes Berkeley is about to work on a multi-million dollar geothermal energy project. Conventional geothermal technology really only works in certain areas like near active volcanic centers and places where it's easy for fluid to circulate through rock fractures for heat extraction. But they're trying to understand and model rock fractures and fluid flow better, which you can see in this picture from before. Those red lines represent fractures where steam and water flow through, and this will help significantly increase the amount of electricity that can be generated from untapped areas of the United States. A company called Dandelion is a Google startup that is offering solutions to switch the heating and cooling system in your house to geothermal. This will basically extract energy from your yard with underground pipes that move heat between the earth and your home. The company is testing a number of installation techniques like different drilling methods to install the piping efficiently and in an inexpensive manner. Another one which isn't directly alternative energy related but has its similarities is smart windows. Smart windows are being developed where just by pressing a button or turning a knob, you can adjust how much sunlight actually gets into a house or car, and this could save billions in heating and cooling costs for the country. In regards to biomass, they are trying to create ways to turn leftover food into energy. According to the US Department of Agriculture, food waste is the biggest component of municipal landfills in the US. Researchers at Cornell University are one group that is taking advantage of the amount of carbon in food waste to generate green energy. If you want to know something chemistry majors can do, this was an old article, but chemists have developed a smart roof coating made from waste cooking oil that can essentially read a thermometer. 
What happens is the coating automatically reflects or transmits heat differently when the temperature changes, which also, like smart windows, would reduce the need for heating and cooling systems. Or something they've worked on is nano generators, which are basically flexible chips that can generate electricity from simple things like body movements or even the wind. And I'm going to stop there. There's obviously much more you can do in renewable energy because it's a huge field, but hopefully this gave you a starting point and an idea of how to get into the field. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.